Every unit in Fire Emblem has HP, which determines the amount of damage they can take before they fall in battle, usually resulting in their permanent death. With this in mind, every unit's individual health can be one of the most important resources to manage in Fire Emblem, especially when it comes to spending and sacrificing this HP. Welcome to a Fire Emblem talk, where I take a dive into a Fire Emblem mechanic, concept or topic and we can go down the rabbit hole together. Before we start I would like to thank the people who back the channel on Patreon, where for just £1 a month you can support me making content like this. For more information on this and the benefits you can get from it, check the link in the description. Health is one of the simplest concepts in Fire Emblem. Each time a unit takes damage, it reduces their HP, and when their HP is zero, the unit dies. Most of the time, outside of things like casual mode or certain specific maps like fe 8 5X. Whilst on the surface this is very straightforward, HP management can get quite complex. Not all units HP have the same value. Some may find it vital to be at full health, some can sacrifice it without a care in the world, and some may even want that HP to be lower. This is particularly relevant when determining who you want to tank an attack with, and whilst other things may also play a role such as counter-attack damage, the amount of damage taken will be a huge factor. For example, is it better to take a large amount of damage on a squishy player phase focus unit such as a mage, or a smaller amount of damage on a physical unit? It might sound obvious, taking less damage is better, right? Well, it's not as clear-cut as you might think. Let me present a scenario. You have Arta and Franz, the former a squishy player phase monk, the latter a cavalier, not strictly a tank, but certainly bulkier than Arta. It's early in a map and you want to bait an axe-wielding bandit. Both units have 20 HP, but Franz has 7 defense versus Arta's 2. The enemy bandit has 14 attack, so Franz takes 7 damage and Arta takes 12. Both of your units deal the same damage on the counter with no doubles occurring. Your first impression might be that obviously Franz takes the hit, he takes much less damage. This is where the value of HP comes into play quite heavily. Whilst Franz takes less damage, his HP is much more valuable than Arta's. For example, if we find ourselves in a situation later where we have to tank two of these enemies, Franz would be able to eat hits from both of them, but not if he suffers this attack first. Arta, on the other hand, would not be able to tank them both in any scenario. What I am getting at is that Franz has a lot more opportunities to make use of his HP resource later down the line, whereas Arta's is much more limited, and if you choose to spend Franz's HP here, you might find yourself in a worse spot later. Whilst you are spending a larger amount of Arta's HP pool, it's the equivalent of trading a large amount of dust instead of a small amount of money. Spending a resource that you have a limited use for, or that you are unlikely to be able to spend again, can be very beneficial. Taking this to a wider scope than just that specific example, the important thing to consider here is how valuable the unit's HP you are going to spend is, and if you can afford to spend that HP. This is usually particularly relevant earlier in a map, when there are still a lot of challenges to face and that HP could come in handy later. The game that you are playing can also play a massive role here. HP has a much higher value in some games than in others, which can be dependent on a variety of factors. For example, in Fire Emblem Three Houses, not considering the plethora of abilities which revolve around health, we will get into those later, HP actually has quite a low value. This is because of many things, but one of the key ones is the access to range flexibility. In Three Houses, any unit is capable of using any weapon, and as a result they will almost always have an ideal option to attack an opponent on the player phase without taking counterattack damage. A bow can be used against all melee opponents, melee can be used against enemy bows, and common 3 range attacks such as curved shot can be used to hit 1-2 range foes like mages. On top of this, attacks like gambits or certain combat arts are unable to be countered at all. Now there are still advantages to being able to eat a retaliation hit on the player phase, but in general a unit being on low health in Fire Emblem 3 houses just doesn't matter as much as it does in a lot of other games, at least in this respect. Let's talk about another aspect of Fire Emblem Three Houses, one that can make HP much more important. Let's talk about ambush reinforcements. Ambush reinforcements, or same turn reinforcements, or that unfair nonsense, are enemies that will spawn into a map partway through and will move and attack on the same turn that they spawn. Three Houses adores these. They are everywhere, and if you aren't familiar with the game to know where they are coming, they will catch you off guard and result in a lot of deaths. The existence of these in a game can make a blind or unsure player need to value HP much higher, as a low HP unit could be picked off at any moment by an ambush spawn. So like with most things, this is to be judged on a case by case basis, and there is no definitive answer of HP is important and should be preserved, or HP is unimportant and can be spent freely, even within one specific game or even a single map. But being aware of the things that can influence this and allow you to make those assessments on the fly can give you a much easier time in any game. 
Of course, in some situations, certain abilities, combat arts, or various other things can make your health much more of an important factor to a unit's strength. Certain abilities require your health to either be full, below, or above a certain value, such as 50%, or will scale based on how much you are missing, such as Vengeance. Any of these can massively alter a unit's HP importance, and are always going to be something you want to factor in. I don't want to spend too much time dwelling on them, they mostly speak for themselves, but they are something that will factor heavily into how valuable a unit's health is, and how much you can afford to spend that resource. To give a couple of quick examples, key adept units in Fire Emblem Engage will typically be more reluctant to spend their HP, as unless they are full, they are unable to chain guard. A unit like Bernadetta from Fire Emblem Three Houses will usually be very willing to expend HP, as it both fuels her personal ability and, once you get it, the lance combat art, Vengeance. Whenever we talk about the value of health, one thing that is always going to play an important role will be how easily lost health can be recovered. This can be done by using an item such as a vulnerary, being healed by another unit, or healing from other sources such as self-healing abilities, on map tiles, or more. This probably goes without saying, but if it is easy and relatively low cost for you to restore HP, then you can spend HP more freely. At the start of a game when you might just have a lone priest running around with a single heal staff who has limited move and only one range and vulneraries as your only item, you might have to be more careful with your HP than when you have multiple healers, mend, physic and fortify at your disposal and all of your units are packing elixirs. The main thing to remember is that you don't need to be at full HP all the time, you just need enough HP to handle the situations you are in and that are coming up. Even if a unit is low on HP, that doesn't matter until a unit has to take an attack. Whether a unit has full HP or a single hit point makes no difference if they don't actually need to take any further hits. To loop back to the previous Arta and Franz situation, if you take that hefty attack with Arta, it might feel natural to prioritise healing him. But the fact is that unless you actually need to take another hit with Otter, it doesn't make a difference. This can free up your healers to do other things. A traditional staffer can take the opportunity to use some other form of utility like a Berserk, Warp or Rescue staff. A healer with more combat potential could use that turn to go on the offence on their own opponent. Of course, both could also take the chance to heal a different ally instead. Just because a unit is low on health, it doesn't mean they necessarily need to be patched up, and recognising when you can safely leave a unit in the danger zone to maximise your action efficiency can be extremely helpful to you throughout the game. Of course, healing when you have the opportunity to can still be beneficial for some free XP, even if it isn't necessary. There are a lot of moments in Fire Emblem where an overfixation on healing can cause you to find yourself in a more difficult spot than you otherwise would be, especially when that healing doesn't pan out into anything too productive, like being able to engage an additional enemy or risk a crit. This doesn't just go for using a healer, but items such as Vulneraries or Elixirs too, which consume the action of the user, minimising what could have been done with their turn. Of course, there's nothing wrong with topping up HP when you need to or when other options aren't available, but finding those times when you can stay low in order to benefit yourself in other ways can massively ease your time through any Fire Emblem game. I think that about covers everything here. If you have anything you would like to see me discuss, feel free to drop a suggestion in the comments. If you would like to talk about this video, the channel, or Fire Emblem in general more, consider joining the Discord. I would also like to once again thank the people who back the channel on Patreon for their support. If you too would like to pledge, there is a link in the description, which also contains more information about the benefits to supporting. Thank you all very much for watching.